today I'm working on uh, getting started so that I can cut out and make a new bag. I might send this up to my friend Shirley. She loves roses. And Tulip Pink has this gorgeous fabric, these roses up here. And uh, I found some really beautiful faux leather to go with. I haven't quite made my mind up yet, but I'm going to use this pink or this ruby color. Both would look beautiful. Maybe I'll make two bags and use them both. I think I have enough fabric for the bag and the lining to make two bags. So this is not, 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 not a tutorial on how to make this bag. In the, um, in the description box, I'll give you a link to where you can purchase the pattern. But this is just mainly, oh, just a look at the process of bag making. Well, first thing you do is you don't let your tape get away from you. <laughs> there we go. And so when you purchase a bag pattern, typically they come on uh, a PDF that you can print. You print the pattern off and cut it out. And I usually print uh, my directions off on just regular printer paper like this. This is the bag I'm making, the Yana from Sh Shambhala. And so I've printed all my directions off on just regular printer paper. But the pattern I print off on cardstock. If you print your bag patterns off, and you know, other things too, uh, not just bag patterns, but some other things, on cardstock, it makes it an awful lot easier to get the markings transferred to the vinyl or the faux leather or the cork or whatever it is that you're um, using and get your bag cut out. And you can also, I mean, I think if you had the long, long mat, you could cut this out on your scan and cut, easy peasy as well as your interfacing and um, Decoville too, Peltex or whatever you're going to use. This is going to be my lining, this lavender and turquoise stripe will be the lining of the bag. I've got some of my hardware picked out. I really think I'm gonna use rainbow hardware with this. And I do have some silver here too, but I'm, I'm sort of, can, well, I guess it's nickel, um, but I am considering that too, but I sure like this. I love this, so I'll probably use the rainbow hardware on this bag. And uh, I, you know, I usually do this. Um, lots of times I will cut all my pattern pieces out on my scan and cut. I, I sat with a pair of scissors and cut these out last night while I watched TV. And so there's, and in this particular pattern, you. It's kind of nice that she gives you a diagram of how you're going to connect all the pieces that you print off and cut out. Because, like, these two might have been on one sheet, these two on a sheet, etc. So that you know, uh, you know, definitely what you're going to be cutting out. And so, uh, what I'm going to do next 
is make sure that I don't have anything else to cut, to um, connect. I don't think I do. And I'm gonna go dig out my uh, woven fuse too. I will interface. This is just quilt cotton, so I'm going to interface this with woven fuse too, and I will probably use some um, some foam, like soft and stable, and maybe I'll even use fusible foam. We'll see. And sometimes I will put a layer of like a lighter interfacing fusible on the back of the fabric. Then I'll fuse the foam. Then I'll fuse a whole piece of woven fuse too. And that makes this really sturdy, like a handbag should be. So uh, I'm gonna go dig out my interfacing and cut that out and make a decision on which one of these faux leathers I want to use, or if I want to use both and make two bags at a time, I can do that too. And uh, we'll go from there. I've decided I'm going to cut my lining out first and, and interface that. And uh, I always press it. This is quilt cotton. So I'm going to press it and I'm using best press and even though I'm going to interface this I want it to be nice and straight and pretty and starched before I cut it out it just makes all your cutting so much more accurate and this is true on quilting and garment making crafting items. I mean, even if you were just making a scrunchie, you would want your fabric to be nice and impressed so that you could get it cut out straight and crisp. All right, so I have a directional fabric here and I've scribbled all over my patterns to remind me of some different things. So uh, this tells me to cut it on the fold, and I think I am going to make two bags. So I will cut two of these, and because my stripes go this way, you know, I don't want my stripes going around. I want them going up and down. So I'm going to cut two of these, and I have to cut two of these, and I have to cut two zipper pockets that we're gonna put a, a zipper pocket in each bag. So I'll get this cut out and then we'll add some interfacing. This is a tip that I learned from Amy Butler. Uh, if you put your um, pattern pieces that you need to keep, keep some information on in these plastic protective sleeves. You can use a water-soluble marker and you can check things off, you know, as you go. And um, this is the cutting instructions here for the Yana and which ones to cut. And you can see I've, I've put some notes on there and um, I do the same thing with larger bag pieces too. I will put notes on if I need to cut them from vinyl or from contrast or from interfacing or whatever on there. Most of them will have it on them. Like here it says cut one exterior. Um, but I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut one of my uh, woven fuse two here. That's what this interfacing is. And then I've cut a just a swath of my Tula pink fabric, which will be the upper portion of my bags. And I'm going to go ahead and fuse, fuse my fabric to the interfacing then 
I'll cut it out because this may shrink a little. And so it's best to really fuse first and cut second. I'm not using too much steam and I am not letting my iron get off the fabric because this is glue and I don't want that to get on the bottom of my iron at all. So I'm going to just fuse this and then I'll cut out my bag pattern piece and then I'll probably go over it one more time and fuse it really, really good. I do have the steam on, on my iron. I do hear a little bit of steam going, but not a lot. And I don't know if you're supposed to use steam with woven fuse too or not. I just want it to get stuck on there, so. <laughs> I usually use dry iron, I think. And I don't let my iron sit in one place. Okay, that's pretty good. I've got this fused on now, and I see where my fabric is. And I'm going to just lay this, I've turned it over so that the cloth side of the interfacing is up. And I'm just going to trace around this and I didn't cut it out with my scissors. I'm using a heat erasable pen, but it wouldn't matter if you, if you used a regular pencil, it would be okay because this is the absolute outside of the pattern piece. And just so you know, um, and you'll kind of develop a feel, I guess you would say, for how much interfacing and stability that you need on bag pieces. And I can feel already that even with just the woven fuse two on here, that it's going to need uh, probably another layer or maybe some Decoville light. And then I'm also going to be using foam and I'm keeping that in mind so that uh, I don't overdo it, but it is kind of loose kind of flimsy and this is the top part of my bag so I need to have this have some body so you'll be able to tell when you're cutting out a bag whatever fabric or vinyl or leather or type of material that you're using in your bag making you'll be able to tell that it it may need more more stabilizer I did decide after I put my woven fuse two on the back of my upper part of my bag to go ahead and, and put another layer of stabilizer. And uh, for that second layer, I used Decoville Light. And um, I get my Decoville and my woven fuse two from Barb's Bags. ScottInterfacing.com is where you would go. And she always puts these wonderful cards in the bag with your interfacing. And on the back are uh, is kind of a little cheat sheet for um, the temperature that you need, the time and the pressure and here's one for Woven Fuse, one for Woven Fuse 2, and Decaville, right there. 
you can maybe you can take a screenshot of that if you want to. But um, if you order from her, you'll get one of these little cards. And I'm going to keep mine right here by my iron because um, I can't remember those things. You know, I told you earlier that um, I didn't know if I should be how long or if I should be using steam or not. And um, now I have my little cheat sheet. So, and now... My, the upper part of my Yana bag feels a little more like vinyl. It's got a nice, nice feel to it for a bag. So this is also, you know, thinking ahead, this is also going to help with the, um, with my grommets, putting my grommets in the top of this bag, they're going to hold much, much better with this good stability on the back of my fabric. Okay. And I used Decoville Heavy on the bag bottoms. This is the base that the bag will be sitting on. So I have fused Decoville Heavy here, and then I'll use foam with that too. And I'm making two bags at the same time. Just as you go along making bags, you'll soon figure out that it takes just not that much more time to do two as it does to do one. It's uh, it's kind of a, I don't know, mass production, time-saving kind of a thing. Uh, I don't do more than two at a time because I, I kind of tend to get lost in my thoughts and two is about my limit, but uh, I, n I, I never hurry myself or anything either. That way I can think things through and uh, follow the pattern and I don't make any mistakes. At least I, I try really hard not to. If you have a heat press, this, is, this goes a lot faster, but I'm uh, putting Decoville Light on the back of the bands that go around the base of both my bags. And so I've laid those down, face down, and I have a Teflon sheet here so that I won't wreck my ironing board or my iron. And uh, I've just kind of pushed them together underneath there. And I'll just go as far as my Teflon sheet goes. And this way I can interface them both at the same time, kind of a little time-saving thing, another little tip there. And then I'll, I'll cut them apart and they will be completely interfaced. Pull my Teflon sheet down. Make sure I don't have any glue stuck to something that's going to get on my vinyl. Let's see, I think I can make it all the way this time to the end. Let's see, let's get that out of the way. Get these guys right up next to each other. And press. And it could be that after I get these cut apart, if I don't feel like they've really, and you want to be sure and put this glue side down, um, if I don't feel like they're doing the very best with being stuck together, I can always press them again after I get them cut apart. I like my little Panasonic iron really good. I don't have a heat press. And I haven't, I make a lot of bags, but I haven't really felt like I should invest in a heat press. As long as I have this little iron, I'm really happy with it. And I don't mass produce bags, so 
there we go. All right, we'll let these cool. They need to cool for several minutes, and then we'll cut them off of there. So another little tip, when, um, and this is anybody who is a garment sewer or a curtain drapery maker, you will know this. Um, but when you're cutting something apart, and I could use my rotary cutter on here, but since the vinyl's a little slippery, I'm not altogether certain I can hold my ruler good and straight. And I already have my bag bottom bands here that I'm cutting apart cut to size. So I'm just using my scissors and I'm going down this tiny little space that's between the two pieces. And if you take little short, short, choppy cuts like this, the edge will be rough and jaggedy. So take long, sweeping cuts and your edges will be beautifully straight and clean. You won't have any extra trimming to do. There we go. Next tip. If you're using Decaville Heavy and you're sewing on a domestic machine, uh, you will want to cut away the seam allowance and then fuse it on. Decaville Heavy, you can hear, is pretty heavy stuff. Decaville Light, you can leave it in the seam allowance. It's not going to hurt anything. And um, I'm going to be sewing on a Vermina, which is a domestic machine, not an industrial. But um, I have to say that some domestic machines can handle almost anything. Um, they may not be classified as an industrial, but my 770, I have asked it to do amazing things. Some of them I didn't think would work, and they did. So, um, I mean, I've sewn uh, uh, decals and things on leather vests for Harley-Davidson motorcycle people, and I've uh, repaired hats and chaps and um, I don't know just I mean I've done all kinds of things with my machine it didn't hurt it at all and it sailed right through so you'll know your machine and its capabilities you know a, a little singer machine that you get um, at Walmart or somewhere might not be able to handle this and so you might need to cut out the seam allowance but um, if, if you have a, what I'm going to call a, a quality machine, a domestic machine, I think you'll be able to make bags and make them beautifully.